This $100,000 app was built entirely with AI. In this video, I'm gonna show you the app along with how you could build your own SaaS products with AI in minutes. But don't worry, you don't need to know how to code. AI platforms like DataButton now make it extremely easy to code with natural language. That means you type what you want and it builds it in seconds. So. Let's get right into it. First of all, this app was built with DataButton. DataButton is an AI app builder using natural language to actually build our own web applications that we could turn into SaaS products. So I wanna show you this app that was actually built with DataButton and it is called Volva. And this is essentially an app that takes a text prompt and turns it into a 3D generated image that you can interact with. So. As you can see, your dream wardrobe designed by you, built by us, this whole app was built with AI and with data buttons. So if we want to play around with this, we click right here. Uh, let's just say, all right, so I want an oak cabinet that has three drawers and two doors to open it. So let's generate this. All right, so there we go. In seconds, we actually have a 3D generated cabinet and it also has a quoted price here and we could order directly from this app. So as you can see, it's got those two doors that I mentioned. It's got three drawers. That is awesome. And this was built entirely with AI. The reason I want to show you this is because this app right here is a $100,000 app for this company. And this no longer does this company need to actually use a graphic designer that could build this for them. It's instantaneously added on their website. And this 100% will increase conversions on their website. Cause look, I could order this exact thing right here. It has a description, it has the specifications, all of this stuff. If we want, I could regenerate this wardrobe. So let's say, all right, so let's make a wardrobe that is less tall and is longer. I also want it to be dark brown. Let's regenerate this wardrobe and see what it builds us along with the price. There we have it, it's a bit wider, it's not as tall, it's got some drawers and it's darker, just like I said. As you can see, we could place the order right here. This is awesome, we'd obviously have to log into our app, but I'm gonna show you how to build an app that you could log into. But I wanted to first of all show you this application because this is a $100,000 app that was built with DataButton using just AI in just a couple of minutes. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to build your own app that you could actually have users log into using Google. So as you can see, I could sign into this application here and get recipes generated for me with ingredients that I have. So I'm gonna show you real quick how to build an app and use this platform with no coding experience at all. So we are now inside of data button. First thing we need to do is give our app a name. So I'm just gonna call this recipe me. Now we just need to add the pitch, which is essentially a one sentence example of what our app is gonna be. I'm gonna type in an app that allows you to input a list of ingredients that you have and get a recipe generated via ChatGPT. Below that is the app description where we list a few certain features that are gonna be inside of our application. So basically I'm gonna say the same thing and then say allow the users to save recipes to their profile. All right, so that should be enough to build our initial prototype. We could always build from here. So this should only take a minute or two for it to build the prototype. And then let's see what it gives us so we can make some different changes. So this is what it built us. You could see it's a pretty cool looking application just from a simple prompt that we gave it. There's a box where we could input our ingredients. Let me test this out to see if it's able to actually generate a recipe. After testing it out, it looks like it's not generating a recipe because we don't have the OpenAI API setup, which allows us to use ChatGPT. So now I'm gonna go over to the right-hand side and tell our AI agent that we need to add this feature. One thing to notice with our AI agent is whenever I give it a task to do, it breaks it into certain subtasks. This needs approval from you in order for it to go ahead and execute these subtasks. So I'm basically saying yes to any of these changes that the AI agent is asking it to make. Next, it's asking us for our OpenAI API key so it could use ChatGPT. So go to OpenAI, grab your API key, and then input it here. It actually shows you a preview of what your app's gonna look like on a desktop, on a tablet, and iPhone. So if you wanna look at the user interface for these different platforms, this is a pretty cool way to check really quickly. Also, if you click on Open Preview, it'll actually show you a preview of what this will look like in the web browser once it's actually deployed. Now that we added the OpenAI API key, it's now asking if it should add it to the front end. So I'm just gonna say yes, proceed. Now that it's added, I'm going to click the open preview and then try to generate a recipe and see if the OpenAI API key is actually working. It looks like the generate recipe is not working, so I need to go back to our agent and let it know it's not working. 
So then it could try to fix itself. A cool thing is you could actually see the agent is saying that it's found the issue and it's going to go ahead and address and try to fix that issue now. I'm actually going to tell our agent to make some user interface changes. So I told our agent, let's make this app look very nice. Maybe add some gradient features or something. You could always give it any user interface preferences and it should try to build it for you. If you look in the agent chat, you can see it actually made certain enhancements to the UI. So you can see there's now a gradient background. You could also see there's now a gradient text effect. You could now hover over certain cards and there's a subtle gradient glow. All these things are just little cool things that make our app look a little bit nicer and more intuitive. All right, so now that we have our initial app built, it looks pretty good. Now we can actually go ahead and create a sign-in method. So we want to be able to give our users the ability to sign into their own account and sign out and be able to do this with Google authentication so they could easily sign in and sign up with their Google account. Okay, so I'm prompting our agent and saying, let's set up the ability to save recipes to your profile. Let users sign in and sign up with Google. Let's add Firebase. So Firebase is the way that we can actually add a back end for users to sign up and have access to their accounts. So now I'm actually gonna show you how to configure our Firebase and we're gonna do this pretty quickly so that way we can have this set up. I'm actually looking at the data button documentation and I'm gonna add this as a resource in the video in the description. So as you can see, it gave us this author wrapper template code. So I'm gonna copy and paste this code and then I'm gonna go back to data button. Let's go over to the left-hand side and under the UI components, click that right-hand box and we're going to want to set up something called auth wrapper. Okay, so follow along with these steps in order to set up your Firebase configuration console. So go to Firebase console, click create project, add a name for your project, click continue, and then move forward and create the project. All right, so once the project is actually set up, click this web icon here, and we want to register our app. So give our app a name. I'm just gonna call mine data button. Click register app. And then right here where it says const Firebase config, we need to copy and paste this. So it's really important that you just copy this information right here and not the full code. And I'm gonna show you where to put this. Actually, before doing so, go back to the database documentation and copy and paste this full code for the auth wrapper. And once that's copied, you wanna go back over to data button, click the left-hand side where it says auth wrapper, and then click edit code delete the code that's in there and then paste this whole block of code into there. All right, and then after doing that, come back to our project settings, scroll down and then this is where we want to copy and paste that const Firebase configuration code. Just like I said, just this information right here, don't copy the full code. Go back to data button where we added our auth wrapper code. And then we want to delete lines 10 through 18 here because as you can see, this just is kind of a template and we need to add our actual information, which is that information that we just copied. So paste that information. All right, so now come over to the left-hand side where it says build and then click the authentication tab. Go up on the top where it says sign in method, click that. You're gonna wanna click on Google and make sure to enable this. So this actually allows you to sign up and sign in with Google. After doing that, go back to the sign up methods, add a new method and we want to add our email and password and enable that. So this allows you to sign up with email and password just like any other software as well. Okay, so after that, stay in the authentication tab, go up on the top right where it says settings and we want to come down and click on authorize domains. Now we need to actually authorize certain domains so that way it could actually use this in our app. Inside of the data button documentation, copy and paste this right here where it says databutton.com and we need to authorize this specific domain. And then next what we need to do is we need to actually authorize the domain once we deploy our website. So essentially when we deploy our website, we're gonna have our own domain to use and we need to make sure to authorize that domain as well as a databutton.com. So come up to the top hand right, the top corner where it says deploy, deploy the app. It will take a bit for this to work. 
And once it's deployed, click on the link it gives you and then copy everything up until where it says app. So as you can see, clone your voice dot data button dot app, copy paste that. I don't need to copy paste the forward slash recipe. Just copy paste that, go back to authentication, add another domain, copy and paste it there and that is added. Okay, so now using the data button documentation, we need to add something in the config tab inside of our data button app. So go over to data button on the top left hand side, there's this gear icon, click that. And this is the configuration part. As you can see where it says secrets, we need to add a new secret key here. So go back to the data button documentation, copy and paste this where it says Firebase underscore project underscore name, paste that into the name part here under secrets. And then for value, follow along with this step in order to figure this out for your app. What you'll wanna do is you'll wanna go up to the left-hand corner, click on the gear icon, go to project settings. Under project settings, you'll see the project ID and we just wanna copy and paste this. Go back to data button and then paste that into the value section there for the Firebase project name secret. And then it's important, click this plus button. That is how you actually add it correctly. Okay, so coming back to the data button documentation, you can see here the protecting UI pages section. We wanna copy and paste this text here. It says, I would like to add the component hashtag auth wrapper to protect my page. So you don't need to know what this means, but essentially this is the ability to add our authentication page before the actual application. What that means is you have to sign into your account or log into your account before you're actually able to use the app. So paste this into our agent here, and then it should go ahead and set this up for us. Now it's actually saying that we need to generate a private key inside of our Firebase console. So come over to your Firebase, go back to the project settings, scroll down, and we need to then copy and paste this const Firebase configuration code again. So make sure to copy this and only this, come back and then paste that there. Now our agent's actually asking us to confirm the Firebase project ID. So come back to Firebase. And then right here, we could find our project ID, just copy and paste that and then paste it into our agent there. Now it's asking if we want to deploy our application. So let's deploy it so we could actually see it live on the web. All right, now we could actually see our web application. It is saying welcome and it's asking us to sign in or sign up. So you can see, I'm going to click sign in with Google. And it's gonna pull up this kind of Google accounts page here. Just click on your account, sign in with Google. And as you can see, we now have access to our account in our recipe me app. So our sign in methods are actually set up now. All right, so now we actually built our app. As you can see, it's deployed here. We're able to sign in with Google. So that means we could actually add this behind a paywall so we could set up a Stripe integration as well. And it's a pretty basic recipe app, but it's really cool. The user interface is great. I built it really quickly. As you can see, I could import a list of ingredients here that I have and click generate recipe. It uses the OpenAI API in order to actually generate this recipe. And boom, there you have it. Pretty cool user interface. We could save it, we could print it off, we could share it. That's great. And we could even log out of our account if we want to. Guys, I hope you could kind of see the potential of a platform like Data Button in this video. In the beginning, when I talked about that app that was built with Data Button, that's a hundred thousand dollar application built with no coding experience at all. So somebody like myself who does not know how to code, is not a developer, could build software products and sell them. So this is an amazing time to live uh, in the day and age of technology if you're an entrepreneur like me with no technical background. Data Button is a great platform to build these platforms with. There's a link in the description to sign up with them if you're interested. Uh, with that being said, I appreciate you guys tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next video.